Hey guys, stick around. I'm about to show you my interval training dynamic stretches routine before I gobble gobble on the Thanksgiving dinner. Okay guys, I'm gonna go do some cardio right now. I'm leaving the kids. Hey guys, say bye. Hey. Yeah. They're gonna go over to Lolo and Lola's and you're coming with me over to the cardio room. Bye, bye babe. Okay, we're gonna go down here, right down there. That's the hallway. We're at the Country Inn, and they do a pretty good job over here. Not too bad, part of Radisson's. Radisson, not bad. Your internet actually works good enough that I can upload and download to YouTube, so I'm happy with that. So here we go. Okay. Not exactly, not exactly the biggest cardio room, but it'll do, and it'll work. And we will make it work because as long as it's got some simple cardio equipment, we can use it. All right. So I decided to start with the elliptical machine. The reason for this is because I like being able to utilize the hand movements on the machine and get the body warmed up. Now, the elliptical machine is limited to small movements on the legs, so I have to go ahead and make sure that I'm pushing from the heel in order to make sure that I'm incorporating my hamstrings and my glutes. And one of the things I do with this, if you can see here from a profile view of my legs, I will actually go down into a quarter squat position and go ahead and put all the emphasis on my heel and by pushing through there I pull through the glutes and the hamstrings if you notice it's almost as if I'm sitting back on the glutes itself and I do that I push the glutes back I keep the chest up and I also emphasize pulling with my arms rather than pushing which is what you usually do when you're standing upright and doing the elliptical machine so pushing my butt back sitting down into my movement and stride in a quarter squat type stance I pull utilizing now the bicep and more importantly the back muscles and then I also pull through the hamstring and the glutes and when you do this properly and you're really following through the body mechanics and being conscious of your movements you can feel it start to burn in as quickly as about 35 to 45 seconds and it just makes a good burn through the system as an interval type set for about a minute to two minutes and then you go back to the standing position of the elliptical machine and then go back down into the quarter squat position for another minute to two minutes and back and forth. So after doing the interval training on the elliptical machine for about 25 minutes, I decided to go over to the treadmill. I raised the treadmill to its highest incline at about 15 and then proceeded to do a nice jog on there. Jogging on that incline for about 10 minutes produced a really great sweat and then I started to go into its own interval training in which I would slow it down then for about a two or three minutes and do a long stride pull up the mountain at that incline of 15. Now I'm pulling through the heel as you can see here and elongating the stride so that I'm utilizing my glutes and my hamstring again to pull myself up that hill. When I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm driving through the hill. I'm using my hands on the side of the elliptical machine to maintain balance only and not to lean on it or utilize it to help pull me through, but to maintain form and to make sure that the glutes and the hamstrings are taking on the brunt of the load. And then I'll go after two or three minutes back into a jog. And then from that jog, it'll start to focus again on the quads and the shorter stride. So quads and calves. And then after about another two or three minutes of that, I'll go right back into that long stride, slow down, climb up the hill with the heels, activating the glutes and the hamstrings again. After doing another 25 minutes of that, making it a total of 15 minutes of some interval style cardio training, I decided to go into my dynamic stretches. And with that, I start off with the TheraBand bar, working, of course, elbows, wrists, and portions of the shoulder. And then I go into my squats after that, which are always excellent to do to open up the lower back and get the hip flexors going. To tell you the truth, this is the first time I'm doing it since Monday. The 15 sets I did on Monday, and I'm going to put the card on the top right-hand side of the screen so you can take a look at that modified workout I did with only two exercises on Monday really crushed my legs and my glutes and my hip flexors. So I just walked them out for the past couple of days. And you know, I was driving to Arizona. So that was a lot of time in the car. So a lot of walking and not so much emphasis on doing the actual air squats. Today's my first time going back to the air squats and being able to get some movement in there. And it feels amazing. And I'm going to kind of stress more about that as to why I did that in another episode. And I'm going to talk about rhabdomyolysis and what that causes and how 
it can cause flu-like symptoms in the body. And that's pretty much what was going on with me over the last two days as well, which added on to all the chaos that was going on with having to get ready to move everybody over to Arizona for the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. But it was great to do the dynamic stretches. We got through that. And then I got ready to go over to the hotel room and finish up and get Thanksgiving on for the evening. Okay guys, so we just finished our cardio workout for the day. I um, showed you some little bit of high intensity interval training along with some dynamic stretches. We're heading back down the hallway now. It's real simple. Just all the way down there to get back to my room. Uh, the kids and Donna have gotten over to Lolo and Lola's. They're getting the Thanksgiving dinner ready. I'm going to go into the hotel room and upload YouTube, get some stuff done, and then head on over to meet them. All right, here we go. Normally I have black, you know, today. Got to have a little bit of creamer. Waiting for the Uber. The kids and Donna have already gone over, so they're hanging out over there. And I'm just waiting for the Uber guy to come pick me up. Just finished uploading all my YouTube stuff, so we're good to go. It's not bad coffee. Now this is going to be really interesting because I know there's going to be a chocolate of all kinds of food over there. So we're going to take a look at what's going on. It's going to be all good stuff. Um, this is the first year that we're not having Lolo and Lola cook because of the death of Tita Orting. So uh, all the kids and siblings are going to be cooking this week. So we'll see how it turns out. It should be pretty good. Plate number one. After the Thanksgiving feast, it was a special evening and it was one of the days of the novena in which the family got together and said a prayer for the recently deceased Tita Orting. And it was an important thing and a practice that is done in the Catholic Church that means a lot to everybody. And getting prepared for Tita Orting's funeral this Saturday is a somber occasion, but also an occasion to look back and reflect and be thankful for everything that we do have and everyone in our families. Um, as I am thankful for you here on this show, watching and learning, as I am thankful for everything else in my life. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving as well, and you had a lot of things in your life to be thankful for. And I hope to see you tomorrow on the 180 and 90, and we will talk about new things. Take care. Have a good one. See you later. Bye-bye.